Hello, it's Steve, and today we are discovering the orbit of Mars, and we're going to do it the way Kepler did it, using the data he got from Tycho Brahe. And as we do this, the key to the whole game will be angle SEM. Let me explain. Let's make a little sketch of the solar system, and let's say the sun is here, so I mark that S. And let's say on a certain day the Earth is here, so I mark that E. And let's say on that same day Mars is here. Remember, we are little tiny people living here on Earth, and from Earth we can look out into space and say we see the Sun in this direction, and we see Mars in this direction. And we can measure the angle between those two directions, angle SEM. And in fact, that's what Tycho Brahe did with these super protractors that he had. And over a 20-year period, he made hundreds, thousands of measurements of angles in the sky, wrote them all carefully in his notebooks. Tycho's notebooks were Kepler's treasure. A particularly interesting time in the orbit of Mars is the time called opposition. This happens about every 26 months. When Mars is at opposition, that means that we here on Earth look in one direction to see Mars and look in exactly the opposite direction to see the Sun. In other words, Mars and the Sun appear in opposite directions in the sky as seen from Earth. In other words, angle SEM is 180 degrees. In other words, when Mars is at opposition, you can draw a straight line from the Sun out through the Earth into space, and you can be sure it will hit Mars. So, the key to what we'll be doing is angle SEM, whatever it might be. Here's our worksheet, and it's a picture of part of the solar system. And the dot at the center is supposed to be the sun, so I marked that S. Kepler was pretty confident that Copernicus was right in saying Earth revolves around the sun once a year. So this is the orbit of Earth, and I've got the Earth's place in its orbit for every day of the year marked on this circle. Kepler was also pretty confident that Mars revolves around the Sun somewhere outside the orbit of Earth, but he didn't know how far out, and he didn't know the shape of the orbit of Mars, whether it was a circle or an oval or some other kind of shape. Kepler also knew that Mars revolves around the Sun about every 687 days, so he knew how long a Mars year is. All right, let's get into it with an example. If you take Mars and a star at the planetarium, you'll get some data like the data that Kepler got from Tycho, although I picked data from another century just to mix things up. So let's start. On January 3rd, 1993, Mars was seen to be in opposition. So let's find where the Earth is on January 3rd. Let's see, that would be right about there. And if Mars is in opposition, that means I can draw a line from the Sun out through the Earth and hit Mars somewhere. So I will carefully draw this line. So on January 3rd, 1993, Mars was in opposition, so I know on that date Mars is somewhere on that line. I don't know where, but here's how I can find out. If I wait one Mars year, Mars will have made one complete revolution around the Sun. Earth will have made one complete revolution plus almost another complete revolution, and it will have ended up somewhere else. So after one Mars year, Mars returns to the same place in space. Earth is somewhere else, though, so we have a different perspective one Mars year later. One Mars year after that opposition takes us to November 21st, 1994. Let's see, where is the Earth on November 21st? Looks like it's right about there. So mark that E94. And 
Our data from Tico says that on that date, November 21st, 1994, angle SEM was 96 degrees. That was measured in the sky. So we draw a line from S to E. And we use our protractor to measure angle SEM. Some protractors have the vertex right at the edge. Some don't. This one doesn't. Check yours to make sure your angles come out right. Anyway, I want 96 degrees for angle SEM. So I put the vertex on the Earth. I line up the zero degree line with the line to the sun. And I measure 96 degrees. Let's see, 70, 80, 90. 96 is right about there. Make just enough of a mark to see it. And I use a straight edge and draw a line out to that mark and see where it crosses the earlier line. And I mark it with M. So I have now pinned down where Mars is in space at at least one point in its orbit. Because I have two observations made one Mars year apart and I know the direction in space. I was looking at each of those two times where those two lines of sight intersect. That's where Mars is at that point in its orbit. Okay, let's pick another date. We're done with that one, so I'll cross it out. The next opposition of Mars was on February 11th, 1995. Okay, where's February 11th? Right about there. So, when Mars is in opposition, that means you can draw a straight line from the Sun out through the Earth. And I know that Mars is somewhere on that line, I just don't know where yet. One Mars year later, Mars will have come around to the same place in space. Earth will have made one complete revolution, and almost all of a second revolution, it'll end up in some different place. Let's see. One Mars year after this opposition takes us to December 29th, 1996. So let's find December 29th. It's right about there. I'll mark that E96. Whatever you can do to keep track of which dot you're using will be helpful. And I'll draw my line SE. And my observations say that on November, excuse me, December 29th, 1996, angle SEM was 100 degrees. Okay, I put the vertex of the protractor on the Earth. I line up the zero line with the direction to the sun. And I look for 100 degrees. That takes us up to here. 100 degrees is more than 90 degrees, a little more than a right angle. So now I finish my line for the line from Earth to Mars. And I have pinned down another point in the orbit of Mars. So on two occasions, one Mars year apart, Mars was at this point in space. I know because I observed it from Earth on two dates, one Mars year apart. Okay, next opposition of Mars was March 20th, 1997. So March 20th is right about there. Mars was in opposition, so that means I can draw a straight line from the Sun out through Earth, and I know that Mars was somewhere on that line. One Mars year later, Mars will return to that line, and that happened on February 5th, 1999. February 5th. Where's the Earth on February 5th? Right there. And on February 5th, 1999, angle SEM was measured to be 103 degrees. So let's draw the SE line first. I want 103 degrees. Okay, there's 90, there's 100. 103 takes me to about there. And I've pinned down another point in the orbit of Mars. On two separate dates, one Mars year apart, Mars was here in space. Well, let's do a few more.
Well, you can see we have about half of the orbit of Mars done now. And you can imagine sketching a smooth curve through all these points. And we would start to see the true shape and size of the orbit of Mars, at least compared to the orbit of Earth. So we used two key ideas. First, we realized that if we observe Mars at one time and then observe it again one Mars year later, the planet will be at the same place in space, but Earth will not be. So we'll have two different perspectives on it, and we can use that to pin down where it is compared to Earth's orbit. Now, the kind of drawing that we did it was just the beginning for Kepler. Here's one of many thousands of pages of Kepler's calculations, all done by hand, no electronic calculator, no laptop, not even an assistant. Kepler was searching for a mathematical equation that would explain why the planets move as they do. And to get to that, he first had to understand in detail how the planets move. A disclaimer, we simplified things a little. The orbit of Earth is not really a perfect circle with the Sun exactly at the center. It's pretty close, but actually Earth's orbit is slightly elliptical and the Sun is not quite at the center. Also, the orbit of Mars is not exactly in the same plane as the orbit of Earth. In other words, it doesn't really belong in the same sheet of paper. The orbit of Mars is actually tilted just a little bit. And those two refinements did occupy Kepler for many hundreds of pages of calculations to be sure he understood them. But we did enough to get the main idea, which is that with careful observations plus mathematics, we can liberate ourselves from the Earth and not just imagine outer space, but really begin to understand it.